Ninth floor. There must be some mistake. There's nothing here. You're traveling to another dimension. Your next stop What's up, everyone? The episode we'll be discussing today, The After Hours, takes me back to the days of the New Year's Eve Twilight Zone marathons. They always seem to air this episode in the lineup, and I always happen to catch it. Thankfully, no matter how many times I've seen it, it's still as creepy and weird as it ever was. I'm excited to finally cover this one. The After Hours is episode 34 from season 1. It was written by Rod Serling and directed by Douglas Hayes. As I've mentioned before here in our review marathon, Hayes was the perfect choice when it came to exploring the darker corners of the fifth dimension. He also directed The Howling Man, Elegy, and Eye of the Beholder, just to name a few. As always, spoilers are ahead. This is Marshall White on the ninth floor. Specialties department, looking for a gold thimble. The odds are that you'll find it. But there are even better odds that you'll find something else. Because this isn't just a department store. This happens to be the Twilight Zone. The After Hours open strong. We meet our lead, Marsha White, as played by Anne Francis. She's shopping for a gift for her mother, and although this isn't your typical frightening setup, things get chilling pretty fast. The elevator operator takes Marsha to a seemingly non-existent ninth floor, described as the specialties department. When Marsha arrives, she's greeted by a single sales clerk, as played by Elizabeth Allen. Can I show you something? Right from the onset, all the ingredients for a spooky mystery are set up perfectly. We have a suspicious elevator operator, a desolate setting, and a very odd sales clerk who, at times, almost seems to be stalking Marsha. Interestingly, the saleswoman happens to have the exact item Marsha wants. In fact, that's all she has. Oh, that's odd. What is Marsha? Now, the fact that the saleswoman somehow knows Marsha by name, well, that only makes things all the more unsettling. How did you know my name? I've probably seen you around the store. No, you haven't. So, in record time, our protagonist is plunged into this eerie, dreamlike scenario. And from here on out, I was hooked. After Marsha basically flees this very bizarre situation, she notices her thimble is damaged. With that, she's directed to the complaints department. For the most part, the uneasy vibe in the After Hours is maintained throughout. But we do get a tonal shift when Marsha seeks to return her item. It's here that we meet Mr. Armbruster, the sales supervisor, and Mr. Sloan, the store manager. While these two aren't exactly a comedy duo, they do offer up some levity, especially in the case of the sales supervisor, as played by James Milholland. She has some idiotic story about having purchased a gold thimble on the ninth floor. You may recall he played a similar role as a quirky sales clerk in the episode I Dream of Jeannie. I just explained to Mr. Armbruster here I did not purchase this in the gift department. That's what makes it so difficult to understand. You see, we don't have a ninth floor. Soon enough, Marcia spots the saleswoman who sold her a thimble. And this is where the episode really throws us for a loop. Well, there she is. There's a woman who waited on me, miss. <laughs> So, is Marsha going mad, or is the saleswoman from the ninth floor actually a mannequin? Whatever the case may be, by now it's obvious this is just vintage Twilight Zone all the way. Later, Marsha awakens in an office after a shock, and finds herself accidentally locked inside the store. These scenes are the absolute highlight of the episode. The atmosphere is ominous, and Anne Francis truly shines in these moments. As Marsha desperately tries to find a way out, her ordeal spirals into pure nightmare territory. Marsha. Marsha. One of the stronger aspects of this episode is the way in which the oddities just seem to pile up. But the tension reaches a fever pitch when the store mannequins begin to show signs of life. Marsha. 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 Come on, we know Marsha. You remember Marsha. Marsha. Eventually, Marsha becomes full-on hysterical and ends up right back in the same elevator where her horror began. When she arrives back on a mysterious ninth floor, 
we finally get some answers as to what's going on. <laughs> the so-called ninth floor is actually a storage area for all the store mannequins. However, this is the fifth dimension, so these mannequins are very much alive. This entire reveal is handled extremely well. We go from Marsha fleeing in terror to a significantly calmer situation without missing a beat. The music in this case, the familiar Bernard Herman score, also helps set the changing mood. Coming back now, is it? With that, we get our trademark Twilight Zone twist. I'm a mannequin. This whole scenario is really out there. But I like that we do find out how this secret society works. Apparently, within their group, the mannequins take turns living among humans once a month. However, in Marsha's case, she got so caught up in her pretend life, she'd forgotten her true identity. It was my turn starting last night. I'm one day delayed already. Of course, I'm sorry. I forgot. No serious harm done. The next mannequin in line is the saleswoman. She forgives Marsha for being late, and the mannequins say farewell as she heads off into the real world. Marsha, however, is left behind, and her story ends on a somber note. Marsha White in her normal and natural state. A wooden lady with a painted face, who one month out of the year takes on the characteristics of someone as normal and as flesh and blood as you and I. But it makes you wonder, doesn't it? Just how normal are we? Just who are the people we nod our hellos to as we pass on the street? A rather good question to ask, particularly in the Twilight Zone. The After Hours is another one of my all-time favorites in the series. I think if you're a horror fan, this is one that will likely be right up your alley. The atmosphere keeps us on our toes and offers up legit scares, especially in a final act. It's not surprising, the After Hours tends to show up on a lot of lists as one of the most scary in the series. Once again, this is Rod Serling in top form. He taps into common fears. We have elements of claustrophobia and the uneasy feeling that some may get when alone in a public space after hours. I think the reason this department store setting works so well is because it's an isolated location and mannequins are just inherently spooky anyway. But Marsha isn't just passing through this mannequin-filled nightmare. She's locked in, and there's no way out. The episode also touches somewhat on feelings that some may get when suffering any sort of identity crisis. The idea of losing yourself comes into play heavily in the conclusion. You enjoy yourself, Marsha? Was it fun? Ever so much fun. Marsha White is initially presented as a strong, confident, friendly young woman. There's nothing to suggest that she isn't who she seems, but all of that supposed normalcy falls away when Marsha realizes what she truly is. We get a real sense of the restrictive existence of these mannequins. Maybe that's why the episode finishes on a lighter note. Even Rod Serling's closing narration, in which he asks, just how normal are we, and who are the people we nod our hellos to, could be interpreted as being tongue-in-cheek. I mean, he's suggesting there could be mannequins out there, pretending to be actual people. Which is a wacky idea. Or... Is it? Are you happy? I beg your pardon. The entire cast here was great, but I have to credit the star of the show, Anne Francis. This was truly a standout performance. Francis is our anchor in this frightening scenario, and we remain on her side the entire time. We'd see Anne Francis again in the fifth dimension in the season four episode, Jezebel. Frances had a long and successful career. She earned a Golden Globe and an Emmy nomination for her performance in the series, Honey West. But she's best known to sci-fi fans for her role in a 1956 classic, Forbidden Planet. I also have to credit William Tuttle, chief of MGM's makeup department, and his assistant, Charles Schramm. They cast top-notch facial molds for these actors. These realistic life-size plaster head models were painted and mounted on mannequin bodies. The effect was perfect. The After Hours is another story that got the remake treatment in the second season of the 80s Twilight Zone revival, directed by Bruce Malmuth and adapted by Rockney S. O'Bannon. This time out, Terry Farrell of Star Trek Deep Space Nine fame took on the role of Marsha. 
Would you mind? How are you, Marsha? The retelling dialed up the scares big time with some haunting visuals and body horror. It also expanded on some of the more disturbing aspects of the original story. Interestingly, instead of seeking a gold thimble in a remake, Marsha is looking for a Cornfield Kid doll, which is basically a Twilight Zone version of the insanely popular Cabbage Patch Kids dolls from the 80s. But the Cornfield reference is obviously a fun little nod to the classic episode, It's a Good Life. In 2008, the episode was also adapted as a graphic novel and Rod Serling's The Twilight Zone, The After Hours, which was written by Mark Neese and illustrated by Rebecca Isaacs. The retelling has a few differences and it expands on some of the mysterious elements of the original tale. And lastly, there's the movie Mannequin. This was the most terrifying remake of them all. You know I would never bother you when you're getting a piece of wood. I'm just kidding. Mannequin is not a remake, but it is based on a true story. Anyway, The After Hours is easily a top tier episode. Again, it's one of my favorites. I'd rate The After Hours 5 out of 5 very creepy mannequins, especially the ones in ski masks. Okay, that's it for me. Thanks for watching everyone. If you've seen The After Hours or the insane 80s remake and have your own thoughts, feel free to comment below. If you enjoyed this review, hit that sub button, hit that like button, and hit the notification bell too. Until next time, stay safe, be well, later. You made this body so that I could come to life. Guys, am I the Twilight Zone or am I just not? <laughs>